Nothing is better than hanging out by a fire. But how does this fire keep me warm? Or deliciously toast a marshmallow or pop popcorn? Let's find out together in this episode all about heat transfer. Tonight is a bit chilly, so I'm glad to be next to this fire to stay nice and warm. Heat travels or transfers in three main ways, conduction, convection, and radiation. Heat isn't a fluid, but it does travel or transfer similarly. Fluids move from high pressure to low pressure. In the same way, when heat passively moves, it always travels from higher temperature to lower temperature. So heat is the transfer of energy from objects of different temperatures. These objects have different kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles in an object. A measure of the kinetic energy of the vibrating and colliding particles in a substance. As temperature increases, the energy of motion also increases. Thermal energy is the total energy of all the particles in any substance, both kinetic and potential energy. Conduction is one of the ways that heat can transfer from one object to another. Let's see how heat from this candle transfers to a balloon, but safety first. What will happen if I hold this balloon close to the flame of this candle? Let's find out. Every time. Let's try again. The heat from the candle heated up the plastic of the balloon, causing a small hole to form and the air quickly escaped and scared me. Let's try one more time just so we can be sure and I will try not to make any noise or be scared. Okay, wish me luck. That wasn't me, that was the balloon. It's fine, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Let's try again with another balloon, but this one is a little different. This time we added water to our balloon, so we have some water here resting at the bottom. Let's see if anything changes. Huh, it's not popping, but why? Same candle with the same heat, same type of plastic balloon. So what is the water doing to cause a different result? Water is really good at absorbing and holding on to heat. The heat from the candle is still being transferred to the plastic of the balloon, but through conduction, the heat is being absorbed by the water. Conduction is the process in which the transfer of heat occurs between objects by direct contact. It is most often associated with solids because of how the particles are arranged. We covered that in our States of Matter episode. This is not always the case, like in our example. Let's use conduction to make some popcorn over our fire. Heat from the fire is now transferring to our metal pot. Conduction is beginning to take place. I'm so excited. Can you hear this? Inside the metal pot, we have a bunch of corn kernels resting at the bottom. Heat is being transferred directly from the metal pot to the corn kernels because the two are touching. Heat doesn't just stay there. Because the corn kernels are resting directly on the interior surface of the pot, that energy also transferred to the particles in the corn. Once a corn kernel has enough heat energy, water inside expands, adding so much pressure, the kernel pops open, creating a great snack. Conduction is heat transfer as a result of molecular contact. Vibrating particles transfer energy to neighboring particles. Heat from the fire is causing molecules within the metal pot to vibrate. This causes the particles to vibrate faster so they collide with neighboring particles more often and with more energy. As the collisions transfer kinetic energy, those surrounding particles will also vibrate faster, colliding more with their neighboring particles. This process repeats over and over again until energy is passed along the metal pot or until heat is distributed all along the metal pot. Convection is heat transfer through or as a result of density differences. Convection occurs mainly in fluids. Remember, fluids are anything that can flow. So both liquids and gases. Heat energy generated by a flame rises as more energetic particles move away from the warmer area toward the cooler area. This is possible because particles in a fluid are not fixed. The fluid in the warmer region expands as it heats up and becomes less dense than the cooler fluid. You can see this action when I light this paper. The flame warms up the air, and because the paper tube is so light, it's caught up in the warm air current and gets pulled upward as well. 
but the remains fall back down as the convection current cools. If you're still here liking this video, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Variations of the temperature or kinetic energy of fluids create natural movement with no external force. This is called a convection current. Here I have a hot plate that is going to generate our heat, a beaker filled with water, food coloring, and some special shampoo. We are going to add heat to the beaker and the fluid inside and see what happens. While we wait, it is important to note that heat transfer by convection usually involves some conduction, especially at first. Like in our example, the hot plate is conducting heat directly to the glass beaker through conduction. Now that our solution is heated up and has gained all of this kinetic energy, let's talk through what happened. First, the particles near the heated beaker gained kinetic energy and spread out, becoming less dense. Because they're less dense, those particles rose above the cooler, more dense particles that were hanging out above them. At the same time, these cooler particles had to go somewhere, so they began to sink down, taking the place of the original particles. But then the heated particles began to lose their energy and cool down, while the cool particles now at the bottom began to heat up. This cycle would just keep repeating for as long as there's fluid being heated. We have witnessed a convection current. We know because of convection that heat from this fire is going to rise, but it's also going to travel outward in the form of waves of energy. Radiation is occurring all around this campfire as this energy travels away from the flame in the form of electromagnetic waves. This is how I can toast my marshmallow even when I hold it out to the side of the fire. Radiation doesn't need a material to travel, so it can occur out in open, empty space, which is why heat energy from the sun is able to reach the surface of the earth. Objects constantly emit and absorb radiation. The hotter the object is, the more radiation it emits. Infrared radiation is radiant energy with longer wavelengths than the visible light that humans can see. It involves waves rather than particles. It cannot be seen, but it can be felt. Infrared energy is felt as heat. We are going to use an infrared camera to see radiation in action. This is my tortoise friend, Dan. Tortoises are reptiles and ectothermic and need a little extra help from radiation to be at a comfortable temperature. Isn't that right? Let's turn on our infrared camera and see what we can observe. On our camera, we can see that this table here is pretty cold and then Dan is pretty warm, but I'm going to turn on his heat lamp and we're going to see what happens to the temperature of these surfaces and our tortoise friend, Dan. Can you see the gauge here at the bottom? As you can see, the colors represent different temperatures. So here, the dark purple is very cold or coldest in the room. And then it goes all the way up to like an orange and a, a red and an orange and a yellow. And then just this white here is like the hottest. This is the heat lamp that he uses when he's inside. You can see that the light bulbs are glowing hot but it's beginning to heat up the surface here. And I'm holding Mr. Dan underneath so he can get nice and warm. Let's see what happens to Dan as we hold him under this light just for a few minutes. Can you see that Dan's shell is starting to heat up? He is getting much happier for sure. Heat transfer is pretty much happening at all times all around us. Conduction through contact, convection through density differences, and radiation through waves. Pay attention to your surroundings and see what examples you can find. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next. The balloon popped. Shocking, I know. 